Hi, so I thought I'd just do a quick video walking through a few of these. So this is going to be for exercise one, recursion, using an if statement. And we will do this in a direct manner. So it directly calls itself as opposed to indirect, where we would have two functions that are looping around one another, calling one another. For this one, and you can Google recursion for a factorial, and you'll find a lot of different open source example tutorials for this. Each one is a little bit different, and that is fine to use one of these open source codes so long as you understand what is happening in here. So let me go ahead and just this is opening up a new project, and I'm going to just take this one piece of a time. So we're going to go ahead and use the, the normal header files. So we will um, include the in out stream and just use a standard namespace so I don't have to put standard in front of anything. And there's two different things that we're going to be using here. We have the main program. So I'll put that down here. So everything inside of these brackets is, is part of that main program. And this is where it will ask the user for some number. So here is a number. And we'll go ahead and declare that number as an integer. And with that number, it's then going to calculate the factorial. Now, this little guy is going to call a function, OK? So the main program is going to call another little program. So let me go ahead and pull that in. So instead of int main, we're going to have a new program up here. And everything inside of these brackets will be what this little factorial function is. So it's going to send information to it. The user inputs a number here. And this is going to send that number into the function. And that number is going to be reassigned to just the value n in here. So we're declaring that n is an integer. And then it's going to go ahead and do some calculations. And then it will return a value for the factorial. OK, so factorial, that's going to be that like 5 times 4 times 3. So it keeps, it keeps going. And we can do this in a, in a looping structure. So what we're going to do is use an if-else loop inside of our function, so so all of this is happening inside these curly brackets. So once we get down, let's say they entered factorial of 5. So we need 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. As soon as it counts down to 1, that would be the end. So that's when we would be returning that number back to our C out statement. So that's what this return one would do. OK, so that that is the first little chunk of that. And this is all happening. Maybe I'll bump this down so you can see what goes with what. So underneath this first if statement, these two go to the first if statement. So that's what's going to happen when we get all the way down to one. Else, if we're still kind of trapped inside, of that 5 times 4 times 3. And this is the piece that turns it into a recursion structure. So right here, what happens is it's actually calling itself. So it's going to get stuck right here in this loop. So 5 times 4, and then 4 calls 3, and 3 calls 2, and 2 calls 1. And 1 is where it escapes out of that loop. So that would be a di direct recursion because it's directly calling itself. OK, so that's what's happening. We have inside of these parentheses right here 
is everything inside of this little function versus our main program that gets information and calls that function. And this gets into modular programming. So you want to take tasks and break it up into modules. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this thing, see if it works. Oh, we have to select a language. And for this one, I'd, I'd like to see you create an algorithm or a flow chart that explains what's happening, kind of with arrows that walks through this. So if we put in factorial of five, and this is outputting five, four, so you can kind of see how that number is changing as it's walking through this loop. So here's the, every time we go through the loop, we're outputting kind of where we are in here. <clears throat> and then at the very end, it's going to output the final factorial of the number when we finally get down to one. Okay, it, it really helps to walk through these in the debugging mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on debugger. This is a good guide, by the way. So glance through this before you start it if you haven't looked at that resource. So I'll go ahead and I guess I need to put in some stopping statements, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here, stop it here, and then we can look at stopping it, stopping it over here too. Okay, and that will hopefully tell us kind of where we're, we're bouncing around to. Okay, so with those in place, I'll go ahead and start the debugger. And we're going to ask for a number. I'll just put in five here. So we entered our number, and now we're jumping down here. And this is where we're going to call that little function. So as I continue, we'll, we'll be able to watch it jump out of the main program into our function. So it comes into the function. It checks to see if we've already made it all the way down to one or not yet. We're not to one yet, so we'll keep continuing. It's going to jump to the next else statement. And this is where we're going to hang out until we get all the way down to one. So it it keeps calling itself and keeps calling itself until we make it all the way down and out of that if statement. So here we've made it out of the if statement, we've counted down to one, and then we are gonna return that to the main program to output what that factorial was. Okay, so hopefully that, yeah, play around with the debugger, Add some see out statements. So if you don't, if you want to see what's happening each time around the loop, just put in a couple more see out statements, <clears throat> and you'll be able to to watch that happen. Okay, hopefully that was that was helpful.